President, please be seated. Um, the court is now back in session. We now hand over the floor again to the prosecution to question this witness. You may proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Witness, just now you said that you reported to Yang Seri about famine that you observed out in the countryside during trips you made outside the city. As a consequence of the report to the ministers, was there a new policy prepared? Yes, there was a policy that is a circular, as I recall. The content of the circular, circular is that the basis need to provide sufficient food to the people to Before someone is accused of any offense, it has to be done through the seven level hierarchy that is from the village up to the sub district, to the district, to the province, up to the zone, and then through the national level and to the central level. Before a decision can be made. Quand vous dites que when you say that it was a decision concerning accusation for some kind of uh, misdemeanor. Uh, what exactly did, did this mean, execution? Response. It is not a decision to execute anyone. That is a a review shall be made through the seven level hierarchy in order to see if an offense had been committed. However, I did not know about the punishment if there was an offense committed. Mr. President, Mr. President. I'd like to refer to D91-14 stroke 14 record of an interview, Khmer ERN 0020-40-97, in French 0050-39-36, And in English, 0, 0, 36, 10, 11. If we could have that on the screen with your permission, Mr. President. Um. The President, yes, you can proceed.
En Khmer, je répète, 0020. En Khmer, 0020. Alors, dans le milieu de cette réponse, donc vous parlez du fait que vous avez accompagné les said that the cadre that gave uh, rice porridge to eat to the population was a traitor. The decision to execute a person in the population was only possible as long as there was a decision taken at the village, commune, district, region, or zone level and by three members of the central committee of the party. Can I ask the witness if he confirms the contents of that report? Bad. Response. Yes, I stand by my statement. However, I'd like to clarify that the policy had not yet been implemented because of the arrival of the Vietnamese. Merci. Il s'agissait d'une nouvelle policy. This was a new policy which appears to have been more restrictive than the one there was before, otherwise it wouldn't have been a new policy. What was the policy that was in force before that one when it came to determining who was a traitor or who how decisions were taken uh, to execute somebody. Response, I did not have the knowledge in this regard. Pour la nouvelle politique, vous avez dit qu'il y avait sept échelons. You said that there were seven echelons that have to give their agreement in the new policy. And in the old policy, how many echelons were required? Response, I did not know the previous policy. I only saw people being arrested. Merci. Je voudrais maintenant... Thank you. I'd like some clarification now concerning the role of Mr. Kyusampong. You told this court that both Kyusampong and Pong occupied duties in the office. It wasn't exactly clear what the differences between the two individuals' responsibilities were in Office 870 when they were working there together. Response. I'd like to clarify that responsibility is not a clear-cut distinction From what I observed, I used the word responsibility. 
However, upon deep thinking, I would prefer the, to use the word assist, assisting in doing this chore or that chore, because the word uh, responsibility is more connected to politics. Also, at that time, I was never informed officially of the status of function of this person or that person. And then we just keep commonly use the word uh, responsible for this or for that. Secondly, for kill some port, in regards to kill some port in that office, and as I use the word responsibility in that office, I did not know in details of his roles and functions. Everybody who worked in Office 870 would be said that the person would bear responsibility in that office, and they would refer to in general as the people who worked at Office 870. So the word used verbally at that time and now translated in the document used in the court is rather subjective. I prefer to use, to use the word uh, assisting, assisting this person doing that or this person distributing that. Between the two people, who dealt with affairs outside and who dealt with internal affairs? Response. You refer to both of them. Whom were you, are you referring to? Pardon, je reviens là. Sorry, let's come back to the first question. Kyusan Pan and Pan. One worked more outside and one worked more inside. Is that the case or not? Response. Here, some pawn mainly worked inside. Occasionally, when I met him, he was always inside. As whether he went to work outside it was beyond my knowledge. Regarding Pong, Pong mainly worked outside. I saw him riding bicycle here, motorbike here and there. Usually I only saw him on the street. Donc vous avez rencontré so, you met Kyusan Pan in Office 870, is that correct? Response, yes. Et vous l'avez And you also met him when sometimes he came to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I think you told us on Monday that he sometimes came round to talk about questions of air flights and tickets. But response, yes, I met him. However, I did not have a direct contact with him. He met with the intellectual group regarding the uh, foreigners. Did Kyu Sampan come to the ministry as well to gather information that he could have used in making speeches? Response. I am uncertain on this matter. Mr. President, I'd like to show response 30 that the witness gave in document D379-36, 369-36. If I may put that on the screen, please. President, yes, you can do so.
Donc la réponse 30. So, response 30. Yes, I recall that and I do not have anything else to add. Est-ce qu'il venait demander ces informations également quand Yang Sari Did he also come and ask for that information when Yang Sari was there? Response. It seems that uh, Yang Sari was not present when he came. Merci. Je voudrais maintenant taking a step backwards to the period before April 75. We're staying on the subject of Mr. Kusampan here. Before April 75, what was the exact role or precise functions of Kusampan in the revolution? Lorsqu'il était dans le mat when he was in the Maquis, when he was working for the front? Or did he work for the Kampuchea Communist Party? The witness, could you please hold the defense counsel? You may proceed. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning to the Chamber and to the parties. I have an objection to lodge with the prosecutor's question, which is particularly leading. I think he is going to have to reword this one. Thank you. All right, so as not to waste time, I will ask the first question. In your knowledge, what were the role and functions of Kyosampan in the revolution before April 1975? It wasn't entirely clear before. Thank you. Response. No, I did not know. Yesterday, you confirmed the contents of response 39 of document D369-36. And you said more particularly for the investigators that when initially he went into the jungle, he worked in an office called the front office. It wasn't an office the, of the central committee. However, he was seen coming and going to the central committee office. This you confirmed yesterday. But can you tell the chamber now what exactly you mean by this front office? What did the front office do? Response. At that time, I was in charge of security or protection, and I led the people to build that office. There were about four to ten people who came to with me to work there. 
and then it was commonly known as the front office, so I just referred to that common name, the front office. So, is this word front to do with the funk, or is it simply that you are, it's a descriptive term to describe it as the front office? Response <coughs> regarding the administrative structure or relationship between the front office or the funk, uh, it was beyond my knowledge. Everyone at the time minded his or her own business, and that is a theory in order to protect the general security. Can you tell us who worked in that front office? Response. I cannot recall clearly. However, the main people I cannot even recall the names of those uh, main individuals. There were some children or sons of the king, something like that, uh, and I cannot recall those uh, people's names. Where were the premises of the front office and the central committee office? Response. I only know some details that it was located at the border of Kampung Cham and Kampung Thum province. The front office was at a far distance from the central office. It took about two days to go between these two offices. Merci. Thank you. I'll come back to what you said about the office, or rather the house or the hut of BIM, when you were out there and you were working as a bodyguard for Pol Pot when you went to Bim, to the west of Udon, and you were with Pol Pot, did you see Kyu Sampong come to the same place and attend the meetings? Response. Are you referring to a person by the name of Kum? Kum? You talk about the name of a person, Gum. Is that correct? No, no, I was talking about the place called Bim. You mentioned various villages west of Udon where you stayed before the attack on Phnom Penh with Pol Pot. And what I want to know is if Kyu Sampan came to that same place and if he attended meetings there. 
response. Yes, I saw kill some pawn there. The meeting was not of a large scale. I saw him assist in the making the list. I believe it was the list for the ammunition. As for the contents of the meeting, it was beyond my knowledge. Did Mr. Q. Sampan have military responsibilities before the attack on Phnom Penh? Response, no, he did not. Why was he in charge of lists of munitions if he had nothing to do with military affairs? Response. Yes, I understand because he was literate, so he was asked to lend a hand. At that time, nobody minded another person as long as the person could accomplish the a task. Did you also see Nunchia coming to the same place to meet Pol Pot in the same commune? Response. I believed I saw him once or twice. Saviez-vous s'il existait Do you know if there were other offices or other houses for the party or military bases near Udon from the start of 1975 until the final onslaught? against Phnom Penh. Response. No, there were no other hats anywhere else. It was only one. And in that house, how many people were working for Pol Pot? Response. I was always there, and there was a cook, and there were two cats, and uh, that was all. I'd like to add that that was just a kind of a bush area. So no major structures could be built. Then it would be bombarded and destroyed by a plane. So it was kind of discreet area. And we were constantly on mobile. What about Chim? who you said later worked as your assistant in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, also worked there with you for Pol Pot? Response. Jim went there once in a while as a messenger uh, to go and uh, find food, food supply or fish uh, for the people at the hut. Whose messenger was Jim at that point? God. He was the messenger of office. Eight hundred seventy. 
Lorsque Pol Pot The importance of my guard around the heart was the fact that ammunition were buried around there and we kept those ammunition to attack the enemies. Merci, je comprends. Thank you. I understand. Regarding the capture of Phnom Penh, you told the chamber that you heard soldiers saying that thousands of spies had infiltrated in Phnom Penh and were capable of carrying out acts of sabotage. When and where did you hear those soldiers say that? I was not a spy on intelligence. I was not able to know where those spies were. However, as a rule, and I only came to know about this rule only in the present time, that the European intelligence were, is very good. They could even now invent planes without a pilot. And during my time, there was not even a telephone. Your question reflects the failure of knowledge during my time. So this is my reaction, but my apologies to that. Question. When you heard that there were thousands of infiltrators in Phnom Penh, did you get to know one, what was the reason for the evacuation of the town? I only knew that the reason of the evacuation was because of that. That is, there must be because of the losing policy of Lunol. In other words, Lunol attempted to gain victory, and by doing so, they would infiltrate their spies in the city. Est-ce que l'évacuation s'inscrivait peut-être aussi? Question: Was the evacuation also part of a policy aimed at? ensuring some kind of egalitarianism and the abolition of the feudal class. Did you hear anything of the sort? I never heard of the words you said. You are now touch upon the issue of philosophy again. as to what the enemy intended to do, it's hard for me to answer that. Thank you. Let me be more concrete. I will return to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for some time, 
I will talk about the period from April 1975 to January 1979. During that period, did the Ministry of Foreign Affairs call on Cambodian intellectuals abroad to return home? Could you indicate the year again? Are you talking about 1975 or 1979? I had both 1975 and 1979. Yes. I asked whether throughout that period, and particularly at the beginning, when the ministry was functional for the first two years, whether the ministry issued a call on intellectuals living abroad to return to the country to help the country. Was it before 1975? No, no, bien sûr. Après. No, of course not. I am referring to the period after the Ministry of Foreign Affairs started functioning. I'm asking you whether the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where you and Mr. Yang Suri worked, whether the Ministry issued a call on intellectuals resident abroad to return home. As far as I know, there was no appeal. <coughs> it was on the voluntary basis as to those who came back home. Vous aviez mentionné plutôt you mentioned earlier, I believe that was on Monday, that you went on mission to the United States with Mr. Yang Suri, and I believe that was to attend the United Nations General Assembly. During that mission, or on another mission, did you stop over in Paris to meet Cambodians who were resident there. Yes, it was the case. Est-ce que cela s'est produit une seule fois? Question. Did that happen once or several times? Mien tai ma dong. It happens only once. Lors de ce passage à Paris. Question. During your stopover in Paris and during your meeting with Cambodians living in Paris, what did Yang Sari say regarding the democratic Cambodian regime? What information did he give? Cambodians who wanted to know what was happening in the country. I did not know about that. I was guarding the luggage. A votre connaissance, question. To your knowledge, how many Khmer intellectuals or students based in Paris returned to Cambodia with their families or without their families between April 1975 and early 1979? Est-ce que je peux vous 
vous demander de répéter votre réponse parce qu'elle n'a pas été... May I request that you repeat your answer because it was not heard by the interpreters. I forget all about it. Je vais juste vous rafraîchir la mémoire. Question. Let me refresh your memory. D. 91.14 is the document. The Khmer number is 0020.40.97. And in French, it is 0050.39.36. And I note that there is no English translation. Part of the record is missing in the English. This question was not translated, neither was the answer to it translated. Mr. President, it is a short sentence that I would like to use to refresh the witness's memory with. Donc la question portait The question had to do with the return of Khmer students and intellectuals, and your answer was several hundreds of students returned. Do you recall stating that, witness? Yes, I do. Question. Who was in charge of welcoming those intellectuals on their arrival at Pochengtong Airport? At Pochengtong Airport, there were the Pochengtong military who received those people, they were in charge at that place. And when they arrived in the city, it was Bong who took the charge. And after that, those people were brought to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Merci. Alors, Thank you. I will repeat the same page in Khmer, D 9114, D 91 slash 14. And there is no ERN in English, of course, and in French, it is ERN 00503936, and in Khmer, it's 0020040. 97. I believe you have the document before you, so let me read what you stated therein. The question had to do with Yang Sari's role. Yang Sari had uh, made a call on Khmer students abroad, and your answer was as follows. He called on Khmer intellectuals and students abroad to return to the country to participate in the reconstruction of the country. That is true. At the time, I was in charge of welcoming all those groups at Pochengtong Airport. Several hundreds of students returned, and those intellectuals went to live in the Bung Tabek office. And Bung was in charge. You also said that Pong was in charge of them. I hope it is clearer to you now. Are you in a position to confirm your statement? I would like to explain this. Does the word appeal
is a spoken word. As far as I know back then, those people wanted to come back home. Only a few of them approached him and he told them back that they should wait. But they said they wanted to go there no matter how hard it would be. So it was not it was not appealing by speaking to the microphone or to publish any newspaper articles appealing them to, co to come back home. So I am of the view that those people wanted to come back home by themselves. He told those students that it was hard back home but those students insisted that they would want to come home. And when they arrived, as I described earlier, it was to do with Bang. Merci. Que faisait Thank you. Question. What became of travel documents? That is, the passports of those persons once they stepped foot at Puchengtong Airport. I did not know about this issue. It was the security and the military at Puchengtong who took charge. I did not know where those people were transported to. But those people's belongings were brought to be kept at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but I did not know what contained in those staff. Question. And while was it necessary to take their personal effects upon the arrival? I did not know the reason why. I just saw those staff were kept there and I was told that those staff were to be kept properly and we didn't, we didn't dare to touch them. Je viens de lire votre déclaration. I have just read in your statement that those persons were sent to Bang Chabek under the responsibility of Pun. Did some of those intellectuals um, were some of those intellectuals not sent directly to Ben Trabek but to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs instead? As far as I know, at that time, they were not supposed to go through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. <coughs> Question regarding the intellectuals Mr. Yang Sari had already met in China. Did some of them subsequently work at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? I can recall one person whose name was Un Sopib. Question. 
and those who did not go to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, to whom were they entrusted? The first person who was directly contacted was An Zopib. And when they arrived at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, they were distributed to Pong. I saw a few people kept coming to the ministry. On a parlé de bon travail tout à Question. Mention was made of Bang Trabek a while ago. Why was it necessary to send those intellectuals to Bang Trabek? Was it a form of education? Or was it, were they sent there for some kind of training to see what they were capable of doing? I did not know about the other's work. I only knew my work. Question. Did Yang Sari and yourself go to Bang Trabek? And if yes, when? I did not know Bang Trabek. As far as I remember, I went there with Bong Yang Sari about half a month before the Vietnamese came. Est-ce qu'il y avait un lien entre Question. Were there any relations between Bang Trabek and the foreign ministry when Bang headed Bang Trabek, given the fact that it was intellectuals who worked at Bang Trabek? I did not see any connection. Est-ce qu'il y aurait eu Question. Is it possible that some cadres of the foreign ministry went to Bang Tramek to indoctrinate or train intellectuals resident there before Bang Trabek was placed under the supervision of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The President, uh, witness, please wait. Uh, Council, you may proceed. Uh, thank you, for, uh, Mr. President. Perhaps if the question could be rephrased, so it doesn't call for speculation. I would most appreciate it. My question to the witness is whether he is aware of the fact that some cadres may have gone to Bang Trabek when it was placed under the supervision of Pang, where he met or indoctrinated intellectuals. Is he aware of this or not? Uh, Mr. President, if I may, just very quickly, I would appreciate if the gentleman would be very careful 
His first question called for speculation. Now he's talking about a fact and about awareness. Is he rephrasing the question or is he suggesting that that was his initial question? Because it gives the impression that somehow the objection that was raised is somehow improper. So if he is rephrasing, then he should tell us that he's rephrasing. And also he's claiming that this is a fact. So this is the counsel leading the witness or testifying. Je vais passer une autre question, Monsieur le Président. I will I'll ask another question, Mr. President, because we have very little time left. And when Mr. Yengsari went to Ben Chabek, witness, what did he do there? As I have said, I went there with him. Sometimes before the Vietnamese came, probably two weeks before, he went there in order to help the people there not to be afraid and to be prepared in the events that we could not fight back we would evacuate. And he told me to be responsible for evacuating the people. Est-ce que vous avez reçu question? In late nineteen seventy eight or early January 1979, did you receive instructions from Yeng Sari regarding the evacuation of intellectuals from Bang Chabek? From my recollection, no. As we understood the situations that the Vietnamese came in, it was about a week before they arrived, he told me to prepare the place. Mr. President, I have only two questions. Mr. President, I have only two questions left. But with your leave, I would like to show the witness uh, document D91-14 and the command number is 002040-97 and in French it is 0050 39 -36. Merci beaucoup. Je signale encore une fois qu'il n'y a pas. Thank you very much. May I again say that there is no English ERN, and that part of the record is missing. Let me read what the witness said in that regard. This is what he said. When the Vietnamese were about to arrive, Mr. Yeng Sari asked me to rally all those intellectuals and to put them on board the train that had to go west. Do you confirm that statement, witness? Yes, I do. Pourquoi était-il important Question. Why was it important for the intellectuals to follow the Khmer Rouge at a time when they were fleeing? I went there to educate them myself. They volunteered.
They were not forced to do so. Thank you. Now, I want to put the last extract to the witness. Would you leave, Mr. President? Since the witness has said that there was no link between Ben Trabek and the ministry before Ben Trabek was placed under the responsibility of the ministry after the Pong's death. And it's document D233-2. And in French, it is 0040-5454. In Khmer, it is 0035-7528. And in English, it is on page 4, 0, 0, 3, 6, 10, 11. May I request that this page be placed on the screen, Mr. President? The Chamber permits. Now, this is a question that was put to you. In the past, Mr. V. Un was able to manage Pang, uh, where he worked in different locations. So we are talking of the past. You said Ms. Un was an intellectual and managed Bang Trabek with Mr. Pang. To my knowledge, there was only one unit at Bang Trabek. Mr. Hin Un reported to the foreign ministry regarding the administration. It was Mr. Pong who reported to the Central Committee. The, such reports had to do with issues regarding arrests and provisions. Mr. Ing Un had no powers. He was only a coordinator. He neither had political or organizational powers. Why did Mr. Ing Un report to the foreign ministry when Bang Trabek was under the responsibility of Pong if there was no link between Bang Trabek and the ministry? I only came to know after the Vietnamese came in. I met with him Un, and he told me so. Before that, I did not have any knowledge about the connections between Bang Tro Baik and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In other words, I only came to know about this after I met him on after the Vietnamese came in. Thank you very much, witness. I have no more questions for you. And thank you, Mr. President, for granting us a little more time this morning. The President, and thank you, Mr. Co-Prosecutor. And thank you, Winesh and Judy Council. It is now appropriate for us to adjourn for lunch. We will break from now until 1.30 in the afternoon. A court officer is instructed to accommodate witness and his duty counsel and to return them to this courtroom at 1.30. Yes, Defence Counsel for Nunji, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'll be brief. Uh, uh, 
My client is uh, waiving his right to be present uh, in court this afternoon and he's requesting permission to follow the afternoon session from the holding cell. The President, you may be seated, Council. After having heard the request of Mr. Nunchir made through his counsel to waive his rights to be present in the court and to follow the proceedings through remote means for the afternoon session, the Chamber grants the request of Mr. Nunchir that has been made through his counsel that he veils his rights to be present in this court and to follow remotely from a holding cell downstairs for the remainder of the today proceedings. Council is required to submit immediately the waiver with the accused thumbprint and or signature. The AV unit is now instructed to live the proceeding for the afternoon session for the accused to follow from downstairs. Security guards are now instructed to take the accused persons to the holding cell downstairs and to keep the accused known here there in the afternoon and to bring the accused kills and pawns to this courtroom by 1.30. The court is now adjourned. All rise. គឺជាទីវាពពតសាសន៍មួយទៀតសម្រាប់ប្រជាជនសម្ពុជាដែលបានរងចាំអស់រយៈពេលជាយូរមកហើយដើម្បីបានឃើញការចាប់ផ្
ចាប់ចាំពីថ្ងៃជាងមួយនៃដំណើរការសក្តិមនាការដែលការនេះមិនដែរកើតមានពីមុនមកតតែសោះកម្មវិធីផ្សព្វផ្សាយដែលបង្